Fall das an. Of course, you cannot see a single thing because it's at the wrong. <coughs> I don't know why it's, it, it would do this, but it, if I do the auto setup, it will pick it up. Store. Well, I have to say that the uh, the little ring um, app and also the uh, the video doorbell thing. Did I I mentioned that last week? I think. Okay. So video it, doorbell. We saw, but I don't know what was the ring. The ring ring app is the app that goes with the doorbell. Oh, the ring. ring. Yeah, so it actually works out really well. You know, over the weekend, I was able to, you know, like you know, know exactly when the postman arrives, uh, whether I get a package or not. Um, and I was working on the front yard, and it keeps you, know, you know, the motion sensor. I keep tripping the motion sensor all the whole time. I had to turn it off. So it actually works really well. Um, so this is one of the uh, one of the ideas of you know how you can use a, an app to enhance a particular item. Okay, because you know without the app, you know you can probably hardwire your doorbell video camera into a monitor in the house, but that's about all you can do. Okay, you know yeah, go ahead. So the, that requires a Bluetooth, right? The it's a Wi-Fi enabled uh, blue, uh, doorbell, so it's. Bluetooth is really slow in terms of how much data it can transmit. It's really slow. So this one is actually Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. Um, some people you know, claim that they don't have a good uh, Wi-Fi signal at the doorbell because that's usually kind of at the far end of a house. So they have to add a repeater to, to get you know, good Wi-Fi you know, signal. But once you have good Wi-Fi signal, it's really good at transmitting that video data. And then your phone goes to the Wi-Fi to connect my phone, like even right now, I can hook up the phone because it's cloud-based. So I'm not going straight to my router at home. I'm actually going to ring.com or a particular server that they run. And that is kind of like a bounce off your place. So they bounce off the video that is actually being captured by the doorbell through the cloud service you know, back to my phone. So you can actually have any number of installations of ring you know, the Ring app to look to look at the same picture at home at the same time. So it's really kind of cool because what what the, the true value of this app is that it is cloud enabled. Okay, without that piece, you can you can you can have a phone, but if it's if it's local, like you know you can you have to be at home on your own network in order to view the video content. It doesn't it doesn't serve as well. As you know, what it can do right now is to go through the cloud, so I can actually check you know the video anytime, anywhere I want to, as long as I have um, internet access. And so you just have to pay for the cloud service. You have to pay for the cloud service, and they are charging for three dollars per month, or if you pay annually, they want they want thirty dollars. Oh, that's not bad. Huh? It's not bad at all, you know, considering you know if somebody does you know appear at your doorstep and they're just kind of looking around being suspicious you can actually see it you know on your phone and you can talk through the doorbell right away and say hey you know, what are you doing <laughs> and that person has no idea unless that person knows what is a rain doorbell and stuff like that that person has no idea that you are not even home okay so they thought that oh maybe somebody is home and just spotted me you know doing something suspicious so most of the time they don't want to continue their Activity because they don't want to run that risk. Because the cloud does the cloud service uh, dump your uh, your video after a certain time, so, so the storage That's capacity a good doesn't keep question. growing. I believe that is the case, but you can download the video clips as well. So there's you know, so within the app there is a uh, a button, so you can actually download the video clips onto your phone, and then from your phone you can transfer it to your computer. So it does, you know, truly enhance the the value of of that my, hardware device. I told my wife about that. She goes, I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Unfortunately, the 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 rebate at Costco is is done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of have to you know, pay the uh, the Total full way. price. Yep. Yeah, but Costco did have a pretty good um, 
good one. So there are accessories, you know, one is a solar panel. So this, so this way you, you can still power up your video, your doorbell, but without having to run the, the wire. Um, so that's one option. I might want to look into that too. And this is a, a security sign, but the security sign itself is not smart, I don't think so. Okay, so that's, that's one thing, okay? The other thing, I think I also talked about this one um, kind of early in the classroom, is the tile. And I guess it's not <coughs> called the tile app anymore. Yep. Do you have the sound up? I believe so. Yep, sound is being recorded. Okay, so the tile app is the, is the actual website. So the tile is also something that is, is an old idea, okay, has been around for a long time. It's basically just a tracker, right? It's no big deal. So let me, let me pull up my tile. Have I shown you guys my tile? I think I have. You put one of your son's... Uh, uh, in a flute, flute yeah, case. into his flute case. Um, I have not had the opportunity to actually need to use it yet. <laughs> He lost it before I put a tile in, and that's why I put a tile into his you know, flute case, is so that you know, if he does lose it again, I would have a chance to locate it. So a tile is nothing, it's not a really brand new concept. You know, people have been selling trackers. You know, remember the good old days when you have to whistle or clap your hand and then your tracker will respond to that by beeping? Okay, you guys may not remember those. But those are the, the same concept, it's a, it's a tracker. So the tile is also a tracker. It's Bluetooth enabled. In other words, you know, the tile actually talks to the phone through Bluetooth. Um, it's a, just a Bluetooth device. It's a low power Bluetooth device. So it doesn't, it's, so the battery inside is not changeable, uh, but it does last a long time. But the, the value of a tile is it is, one, it's connected to an app, which is good, right? And it's cloud-based, okay? It is cloud-based. So once it is cloud-based and you declare you know, a particular tile to be lost or stolen, then everybody else who has the tile app installed can potentially be your friend and looking for your tile. Without their knowledge. You know? Without their knowledge, exactly. Okay? Because you, know, you don't want that to be disclosed to people and say that, okay, you, your, your, your tile app is currently looking for 20 you know, you know, stolen items you know, right now. Okay? So that part is hidden. But it does you know, help you know, use the cloud to help connect other mobile devices to try to look for your, your specific tile device. Well, that would be in the contract, though, wouldn't it? Hmm? Would that be in the contract? Probably so. So when you look at you know, how it works, okay, you can watch this video. Have I shown you the video? So let's see. This is a new one because they, they, they just released the smaller tile. So they want to uh, they want people to buy the new you know, smaller tile for money for cost of course. Okay, so let me see. That's the one. And let me crank it up and see if it works. Uh, oh I just lost it, I think. There we go. It's muted. That helps you find anything. Okay, let's do it one more time. For all the important things in our lives that we never want to lose and can't do without, there's Tile, this simple little device that helps you find anything. Attach tile to your things, and then finding them is easy. Ring your wallet to find it wherever it's hiding. Or use the tile app to see where you left your car on a map. If it's your phone that you're looking for, press the button on any of your tiles, and your phone will ring, even on silent. lose your wallet and it isn't where you last had it tile can still help you find it just ask to be notified when your wallet is found and when any user in tiles global network comes within range of your missing wallet 
the Tile app will notify you of its most recent location. My Mr. Cash. <laughs> Tile, the simple, easy way to find the things that matter. Get Tile today and join the millions of Tile users who worry less and find more. Tile, find what matters. Hmm? What is the cost for time? Um, it's not too bad. Um, so let's go to products. They have different models now. You know, whereas you know, before they only had one. So they have a tile mate, which is the smaller version, and then the slim version, which is not as small, but it is slimmer, so you can put it in your wallet. So let's check out the price. So the mate is $25 each, but if you buy four, as a pack is $70. If you buy eight, it's $130. And then with the other one, one is $30, four is $100, and if you buy eight pack, eight pack it is $155. So it's not terrible, but it is still a little on the expensive side, which means you're not gonna attach it to something that is not worth a whole lot of money or your, your time. Because it's cloud-based, I mean, you're, if you had one in your car and your car was, was stolen, even if it went to New York, it'd still pick it up. Huh? It depends on whether someone, you know, so happens to, so if phone. someone with their phone running the tile app so happened to walk by your right. car, so it does, you know, have the same function as LoJack, because, you know, LoJack, you know, is a typical anti-theft thing, you know, for cars where, you know, if somebody steals the car, you know, they would be trackable. So this is kind of like that, but it does require someone with a phone with a tile app running, so happen to be walking within the range of detecting the tile. <clears throat> in fact, you can also check in you know, with the tile app. I think you can also check you know how many uh, tile apps are running within your neighborhood, so you can actually get a sense of that idea. Let me let me check it with mine. But what the the reason why I'm bringing this up is not to promote the sales of tile or the doorbell thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm not getting any money you know, by doing that. But I think for some of you, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a good idea of making a particular device, you can think about you know, hooking up that device to an app. And then with the app, and also hook it up to the cloud. And that can you know, really enhance the, uh, the value of you know, devices. So I'm, I'm just looking up the Tile app right now and see if I can get a, a neighborhood map of who else has Tile installed? So here we go. Yep, the first thing it does is to, is to, is to tell me that Tile Mate is now released and do I want to buy one? <laughs> no. Okay, so I do have a map here. So the map does uh, one tile, it shows me that one tile will stop working soon because the battery within a tile is not replaceable. So it tracks you know, how much power or how much battery life is still left, and it shows me which one is going to stop working. Okay, your tiles need to be replaced, upgrade to the tile slim or tile mate, blah, 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 blah. And there's a button here to, that, called, that says retile, R-E tile, which means you know, it will automatically place an order to <laughs> buy a few more tiles to replace the one that are about to expire. But the map, okay, I'm just looking at the, the map right now. So the map shows, you know, the possessions that I have and where they are on the map. It shows one thing is still at home, and that's, oh, oh, oh that's funny. That's my son's flute, <laughs> which basically means either he forgot to bring his flute. Yes, he did. He forgot this morning. I just realized, I just remembered, because when he got out of the car, I, I asked him, hey, Luke, where's your flute? I forgot. So it shows that the flute is still at home. <laughs> and that's because, you know, when a tile app is running, it will kind of constantly pull, you know, all the tiles that it does recognize, and it will remember the location the last time it had contact with those particular tiles. So the last time this phone had contact with that particular tile in my son's you know, flute case was at home, and that's why, you know, on the map it shows, hey, that tile, that tile is still at home. But my phone is currently here, <laughs> obviously. So, so it's it really is kind of cool, okay? Like a spy device. Huh? 
<laughs> you can use it as a spy device, okay? You know, like you know, people who want to spy on their spouses, you know, they can just kind of stick one to their car or something. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, but but this is the kind of thing, and uh, my wife also was talking about spirals. You know, my wife got this. Uh, it's a Fitbit, and we also got it from Costco. It's a Fitbit. What is the name of that thing? Oh, it's a, okay, I guess I if I can just look it up. It's a Charge 2. Um, and we got it from Costco when they had really good uh, rebate too. So this is a personal, you know, kind of exercise uh, heart rate you know, tracking thing. My wife really likes it because it helps to track the heartbeat too. So it can, she can actually track her exercise you know, throughout the day. And it also, you know, because it also ties into the um, Fitbit app, which also sends out reminders. You can turn on the reminder and so, okay, if I stay you know, stationary for more than an hour, you know, give me a, send me a reminder so that I remember to get up and walk around a little bit. Where's the reminder? The reminder can the show up on the device itself. It can the give you a vibration. Oh. Yeah, it will just give you a buzz, and then it will show you a message and say, "Okay, it's time to get up and, and walk around a little bit." Oh, that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's got a, um, a little water bottle, and then the lid of the water bottle has got a timer, and it beeps at her when it's time for her to remember to drink water. Okay, now, now just, just stay with that concept, okay? So with that particular device, it is not connect, there's no connectivity, it's just a little, little, little timer. But if you think about it, if that thing is Bluetooth enabled, it hooks up to your phone, and it is also cloud connected, then you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Because it, you, can, you can also, do, because you can monitor the water intake of your mom right here <laughs> in the classroom. Drink more water, mom. Yeah, you can call your mom right away. It's like, mom, you're you know like half an hour past your eight ounces of you know, water. <laughs> you can check on your mom. Now, the one of the things that people do with this particular thing, you know, is not to use it as a doorbell. Some people, as I said, you'll use it as an intercom. Okay, you know, living with someone who may need assistance. Okay, you know, this is also can be used as an intercom because it has a button. Okay, you can put it in a room, you know, where that person can push the button. But it, ha it has a video camera, it has a button, and you can also use uh, audio to interact with the other person. So some people just use it as an intercom, you know, and you can install multiple versions, multiple units in the same household, and be able to connect to it, you know, remotely through the cloud. So there are all kinds of applications. But the water bottle one is a good idea too. I mean, you know, once the technology has come down in price enough, you can have you know, sensors in the bottle too. So you know, whether someone is actually drinking or not, you can actually sense it you know, with a tilt sensor. Am I, are we going somewhere here? Yeah. And there are more devices too, you know, because I, I just want to show you guys what can be done with apps, okay? Um, there's this thing called, Spire, okay. Spire Bluetooth device, and this one I found uh, on the on the internet as well. I don't have it yet, okay. But this is a device. Sorry. You can buy all the gadgets. <laughs> if I had the money. <laughs> okay, so this one is a is a tracker, but it's it's, it's also based on a solar meter, okay. In other words, it has, there's a solid state accelerometer on it to measure you know, movement. But the purpose of this thing is not an exercise tracker. It is supposed to track your breathing patterns. So you either hook it up to your belt, or for you know, women there, okay, let's just say more places to attach it to. Um, but the way it works is it, it, it measures your breathing. Okay? And most people, when they're anxious, when they're angry, or when they're not calm, their breathing pattern will change. Mm -hmm. So this device can track it, and through an application, to, through an app, it can tell you and go like, okay, you're you know, not feeling calm, you, know, you can you know, use a brief moment, and the app itself includes you know, videos and guidelines of how to stay calm, or how to you know, kind of quiet down your mind. Yep. It seems like it would have to be attached at a certain location, would that like Yes. Belly? Yeah, it has to be uh, on your belt, 
Okay, you know, so if you if you wear pants, okay, your belt is a good place to attach it to, because when you breathe, your diaphragm will move, and then there, there will actually be movement that this thing can can uh, can detect. When you are walking around, it doesn't work because it cannot you know, sense your actual breathing. But when you sit down or when you're stationary, then it can kick in and actually be useful for that purpose. <clears throat> So the science behind it is you know, based on respiration. It's, an, it's the only automatic function that you have direct control over, which means you know, most of the time it's automatic, but, occasion, but if you need to, you can actually control your breathing pattern. Like you can always control it, go like deep breathe, hold it, and then exhale. Okay? And this is how you can relax too. It, it, the, the science behind this is, is physiological. Um, your breathing hooks up to your, if I remember correctly, it is the anti-sympathetic system, which is you know a nervous system part of your spine and your brain that calms you. So when you do deep breathing, it automatically calms you. Para, exactly, parasympathetic, and it's got a video too. So let's see. So it basically measures, you know, how uh, frequently you're breathing. Okay, if it, the the high the the higher the frequency, the more tense you are. Okay, unless you're exercising and doing some other stuff. <clears throat> and then the app, once again, you know, the device itself is relatively simple and in terms of what it can do. But the app being also cloud connected also makes it possible to log throughout the day. Okay, and because it's also through the cloud. You can also you know, hook it up potentially to professionals. Okay, you can hook it up to professional people who can coach you through, throughout the day and go like they can call you or text you and go like, okay, I can see you're feeling a little tense. Do you need to talk to me? Like a life coach. Or like a life coach, exactly. But you can you can kind of imagine how the app itself is making the device far more valuable than just something that can you know, like count your breathing pattern, right? You can, you can have a little standalone device that can just do the counting per minute and show you a number. And you can call it at the end of the whole story. But the question is, when you are actually nervous, when you're angry, when you are you know, feeling not so great, are you going to go like, oh, I think I'm not feeling so well, let me check. Not gonna happen, right? <clears throat> when somebody cuts you off you know, in traffic or, and, and then give you the finger, <laughs> okay, and then hit on the brakes right in front of you. Are you gonna go like, yes, I think I'm getting a little bit pissed right now? <laughs> no. You're gonna go like like that, right? So your app can now you know, kind of ding you and go like, okay, you know, okay, it's time to you know, breathe, you know, give you give you a little sound to let you know that you are agitated. Okay. I personally think it's a great idea. And the fact that it is cloud connected, you know, makes it possible for live coaches to kind of call in and go like, okay, you know, do you need to talk to someone? You know, stuff like that. Now, of course, it also leads to all kinds of privacy issues. <laughs> if someone, you know, breaks into the cloud, you know, server, you know, and be able to retrieve the record of somebody else, you know, they can use it, you know, against you know, those other people. So there are, you know, issues like that too. And there's one more that I think is also kind of really cool that is kind of in the same line, and it's called the Muse. Okay, so Muse is also Bluetooth enabled, and it has you know, apps to attach to it too. So this one is You have seen this one? Okay, I'm gonna find out whether they have a video on this one. Pause for a moment to think about all the things in your life where feedback helps you learn. Playing a musical instrument, cooking, learning to code, or even learning to read and write. Imagine learning to play a guitar without being able to actually hear the music you're making. Sure, you could memorize the finger positions, but it's easier and quicker and more rewarding when you can actually hear the sounds you're making. 
and shape them into music real time. Learning to meditate is no different. Meditation teaches us to tune into the real-time stream of feedback provided by our mind and body from moment to moment, but this takes time. Muse helps us to accelerate this learning process by measuring and mirroring the subtle fluctuations in our brain activity during meditation. Muse welcomes you into a peaceful environment where you'll hear the weather change to provide real-time feedback on your brain state. The headband translates what's happening in your brain into guiding sounds. So how does this help you? Without regular meditation practice, it's unlikely that you'll learn to sense the subtle shifts in your mood and mental state. But with Muse, you can slap a sensor on your head to pick up your brain signals and to stay in tune with the subtle subconscious changes which you may otherwise miss completely. This creates a feedback loop which helps you find mindfulness and provide you with deeper insights into your state of being. Muse, the brain sensing headband. So the device itself is a little bit expensive, okay, it's $250. Um, but according to some of the reviews, it is actually fairly accurate. Uh, some people compare this to some of the professional EGG uh, machines that people actually use in hospitals to kind of measure your brain weight. And this one, you know, it doesn't, the problem is this one does not uh, give you the charts or the graphs. It just, you know, tells you, it, it gives you the feedback using um, weather sounds, okay, you know, storms, you know, just breezes and whatnot. You know, in the case of my head, you know, I wonder whether they have the sound of what it sounds like inside a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a sharknado, sharknado. Yeah. Have you guys watched that movie? In the sequel to that one? <laughs> no, do you know what is sharknado? A bunch of films. I remember there was one part where uh, he jumped in the shark's mouth and then he came out like through his stomach, pulling the chainsaw, and he got all the way through his stomach. <laughs> Is that in the sequel or the original? Oh, no, uh, I just remember seeing that commercial about other cast. So anyway, <laughs> yep, so this one, you know, does, it, it just gives you the feedback using the sound of weather, but the kind of data it collects is probably a lot more than that. Um, so once again, you know, it is the app that makes the device more usable because you know the, the device itself I don't think it's even intelligent it is probably really just recording the electrical signals and send all the electrical signal to your phone and your phone may not even be doing all the process it can be sending all of that stuff to the cloud and have it processed in the cloud and have the cloud to send back you know okay you should start to play thunderstorm right, right now or you should play you know just normal breeze you know just stuff like that so I think these are all you know, cloud connected. In order for it to work, it has to be cloud connected. So once again, we're looking at devices that are kind of cool, but you know they are even better because they are now cloud connected. Does anyone in this class have any like ideas of you know, okay, if I can make this thing, you know, I can be a millionaire in a few days? Okay, all of these are ideas like that. Okay, you know, in fact, the simpler the idea, like tile, the, the, the higher your chances of succeeding you know, of, you know, in a short amount of time because it doesn't need as much you know, uh, research work to back it up. Like something like this, it requires a lot of research work. Okay, this is not something that people can just, oh, I'll put together, I'll go to the hacker lab and have somebody to help me code this whole thing and I'll be done in a week. Okay, this is going to be taking like decades. Okay, you know, whoever is working on this one probably have been working with the technology for a long time. Okay, are there any questions about all of these things? Because I just want to show you guys <coughs> devices that are Bluetooth enabled, and the value of the device is mostly coming from the apps and not so much of the device itself. You can find a device like a, a Fitbit thing. It's not. It's really just the original Fitbit is no more than a pedometer. Okay, how many people still remember the mechanical pedometers? You guys have never seen a mechanical pedometer. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so they're just keeping track of the counter, right? You know, when you move, you know, there's a little offset uh, mass. 
that will trigger the counter to go up. So you can just you know look at the number you know and find out you know how many steps you have taken since the last time you reset it. Okay. Well, how come that is not helpful? Comparing a mechanical pedometer to something like um, a Fitbit. What makes the Fitbit more effective? It takes your pulse. Hmm? It takes your pulse. It takes your pulse, but only certain Fitbits you know, can take your pulse. Even the ones that cannot take your pulse can still be more valuable than a mechanical pedometer. Why is that the case? I know it makes it more useful because it's connected to the web. It's, it's connected to the web, but it's also connected to your phone. to your phone. And why is that more helpful? Okay, come on, you guys. You're in this class for a reason, okay? You know, why do you think an app makes your pedometer more helpful, even if it is not cloud connected? More control over it? It can alert you. It is not something that you have to look at in order to do something, okay? It can detect that you have not moved, okay, for an hour. It can give you an alert and go like, okay, you know, it's time to get moving, give you suggestions. It can coach you through healthier lifestyles. That is what all of these things are selling. They're not selling the device, okay? They're, these are not targeting people like myself, okay? You know, I'm the curious kind, you know, I just want to know how things work, okay? But these are all selling, these are selling lifestyles. They're selling, you know, people go like, okay, you can now have a healthier lifestyle, both, you know, physically and mentally. And without the app, it's just a geeky toy. They can only sell to geeks, like myself. <laughs> but they can never sell to people who just want it to work and be able to change the way they think, they change the way they you know, eat, change the way they exercise. And there's one more that I was actually personally looking into, and I'm trying to remember the name of that thing. It's, this is what led me into all of these things. You know, I did the research over the weekend. <sighs> what is the name of that thing? Uh, yep, uh, Lumo, Lumo Lift. This is the one that I actually looked into. Uh, what is that? Let's take a look. <laughs> okay, watch video. Confidence and appearance both start with how you hold yourself. But it can be challenging in our busy, stressful lives to remember to stand tall and sit strong. The solution? LumoLift. LumoLift. Lift is a revolutionary appearance booster and activity tracker that provides real-time feedback to guide you to great posture. It's a magnetic sensor worn like a clasp or lapel pin on your upper body, either as jewelry or hidden under your clothes. Lift tracks your body positions and movements. When you slouch or close off your body, Lumo Lift provides a gentle vibration to remind you to keep your shoulders down and back and head lifted. Lift also connects to an app that tracks your posture, giving you gentle nudges to help you improve over time. Okay, right there. Okay, so right there, this is why, you know, some device for health improvement of any kind it's going to be more effective because of the feedback. Okay, think about why kids. Okay, you know, if you have kids, then you know. Okay, maybe not your kids, but if you know kids, why do they play video games? We talked about this in this class as well. Why do get people like? Why do people like to play video games? Competition. Okay, let's say we're dealing with Pokemon Go. Okay. So why do you like? What do you think? Why do you think people play Pokemon Go? The sense of achievement. Sense of achievement. How is that done? You do something. There's feedback of some kind, yeah. right? You get a score of some kind. Okay. You get a collection of Pokemon, right? I've collected all of these Pokemon, right? You beat, you know, gyms. Okay. So you can say, oh, I have beaten all these gyms, and so on and so forth. So there, there are numbers involved. And then what do they do after you collect, you know, as like 20 of this kind of Pokemon or, you know, 40 of those Pokemon or you have you visited like 200,000 
your pokey stops. What what do they do? They give you B. Starts with a B. Well, it's not an award. Okay, so that's that's kind of a general generic term. But these days, so there's a very kind of hip hip term to refer to those things. Badges. They give you oh. badges. Okay. Oh, and guess what Fitbits like will do when you're done, you know, exercising for the day, or when you have gone through a certain number of steps in the day. They give you badges. Okay, they give you feedback, basically. They give you feedback, kind of like this, okay? So they can give you feedback like, your posture was remarkable. You were super active. So give you feedback like this, and this is what makes the device better. In other words, you can make a device that can do the um, posture sensing and hook up to an electric shock system. <laughs> so when you slough, it will <coughs> shock you into shape. I don't think that will sell very well. <laughs> Okay, because as effective as it may be in terms of your know, sensor accuracy and stuff like that, people do not like to be shocked. They like to be encouraged, right? And with an app, that can give you the encouragement. They can give you a gentle reminder when you slouch. Okay, it's like ding ding. They'll you know, give you a very you know, gentle nudge, and when you do it right, they give you feedback. And that's what these devices are really selling. That they, they're selling solutions. They're not selling the device itself. They're selling a solution to help improve some aspect of what we consider important. But they, when they say you don't do well, mm -hmm. like you could do better. Or they give suggestions. Yeah. So they don't just say they don't just oh, criticize and say you suck. Right. Oh, right. <coughs> that would, that yeah. probably is worse than the electrical shock. <laughs> exactly. Because you know now your your you know your mental image is like oh I'm a failure. Yeah, oh, never can getting that. shock is not quite as bad as feeling a, a, a failure. So they would actually give you suggestions like yeah. you know okay here's a suggestion you can now you know, tuck in your tummy you know and straighten up your back and if, with your shoulder relaxed you know try to pull your shoulder blade and the back together using that muscle and then you know, once you correct it will give you a feedback and say good job mm -hmm. okay this is the way to do it. So it all has to do with how the app is written. And you can now see how your know, app writing is no longer just a programming or computer science thing. Okay? Because as computer science people, what do we do? I mean, some of us are really quote unquote computer science people. What do we do as computer science people? Oh. When you work on, the, on devices like this, what do you show? You show numbers. Yeah. Oh. Your tilt angle, okay? Your, you're, you're slouching and this angle is like this much and you are 60 or 25 degrees from where you're supposed to be. And then they will show you the time, like okay, you are slouching 60% of the time. That's not what people want to know. No. So computer science people alone are not enough anymore for these things to work. What else do you need for apps like these or devices like these to sell? Customer service, but who designed this app here? Not computer science people, because we don't. We certainly do not use words like remarkable or super active. We say it's correct or it is incorrect. Psychologists, psychologists, you know, people who understand how the mind works. Okay, so now you start to have those people involved in the process of writing apps. Okay, is that okay? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and finish this video. Why is this important? Lyft was built based on scientific research showing that when you hold yourself in an open, upright position, you actually get a surge of hormones that make you feel and look more powerful. Great posture helps prevent back pain, lowers stress, and helps you to become more productive. So keep pushing and Lyft will be with you every step of the way. Bring out the more healthy and happy you. You go, and from the from the background music, you can kind of feel that these things are all selling lifestyles. They're not selling a device. It's, once again, you know, as I said, they're not selling these to geeks. They're selling these to people who want to improve the way they look. The reason why I look into this is not for me to appear any taller. You know, that is not something that is achievable. The reason I look into this is because I have nerve uh, uh, nerve pinching. 
my C6 and C7 you know, columns are compressing a little bit, so it's pinching on my nerve. And as a result of that, I need to fix something. So how do you fix your know, nerve pinching? Stretch. Hmm? Yoga. Stretch. Stretch, OK. But why, why do you think that helps? Well, typically, if you really want to relieve the, the compression, you can, I can wear a device on my neck to help kind of like you know, lift my head without my neck having to support it. Okay, but that would make me look like you know the origin, the, or, the early day Batman, because I won't be able to turn my head. And I have to move my whole body like this, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So posture is the key because you know what happens when I slouch like this, and my head tilts like this. Well, it puts a lot of strain on the spinal column because because my head is now tilted, right? So the, the way to fix it is change the posture, okay? S sit more upright, and that's what prompted me to look into devices like this. But did they mention anything about you know oh this can help you know, with post you know, fixing your posture so that your pinched nerve you know can you can alleviate the symptoms of pinched nerve? Did they say anything about that? No, no? because it's selling. It's not selling being sold as a medical device. Yeah. It's being sold as something to help the, to improve the image of the user. Okay. Well, you guys are all in this class because you want to learn how to write apps. But why did you want to learn how to write apps? Very good. Okay. So we got we got this as an idea. Okay. You want to make money. No. Yep. But something like this is attached to the, uh, it's attaching an actual device that is relatively inexpensive to an app that is doing most of the work. So that will serve two purposes. Okay, let's, let's just say that you have a really great app, okay? So let's say, you know, I have an app here. Uh, it's called Sun Surveyor, okay? It can uh, basically tell me, you know, where the sun is supposed to be on any particular day in the year. It's, re it's really great for gardening because you can find the right spot in the backyard to plant something. So for tomato plants or something that needs full sun, I can go, to, go through my entire yard and look at the, you know, how the tree and the house is going to shade that area in the summer so I can actually plant ahead of time. Okay? Um, can that particular app have competitors? Looking at this app, go like, I can do the same thing. If it's a software only thing, it's very easy to compete. Okay, somebody can copy the functionality of an app and be able to compete. Does that make any sense? What about something like this? What would we involve? What What will it involve to compete with uh, Lumo or the other one, the other devices that we just talked about? You need the hardware. The you need the hardware exactly. You need to be able. You need to combine the the, the hardware. You need to integrate the hardware with the software and the cloud service in order to compete. So that means it's harder for people to compete with these particular products. Is that making any sense? So if you're just writing apps, it's easy for people to compete with you. But if you are combining your app with an actual physical device, that may not be very complicated. The Lumo device is definitely not complicated. It's just a tilt sensor that is Bluetooth enabled. In other words, if I could like attach my phone like this, <laughs> it would be able to do the same thing. Except I won't be able to see it anymore, right? <laughs> I need a mirror to look at my, 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 my app, and it has to display everything kind of in reverse order because it will be a mirror image, right? But the device itself is dirt cheap, okay? It's just a little battery rechargeable with a tilt sensor. But making the uh, making the whole package work and be able to charge the money they're charging, they are integrating the sensor with the app and also potentially cloud. Is that okay so far? <clears throat> so you, if you guys have any idea of, you know, okay, you know, if they can make something like this, you know, I can think of a whole lot of ideas of what we can do. Um, there are all kinds of posture you know that we can fix such as you know how you type on your keyboard you know how you sit 
when you're typing. Taking, That'll be a, sorry? Taking breaks when you study, because I never do. I, I'm, I just sit for hours, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I'm just exhausted. Well, the Fitbit can do that already. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so you don't need to. There, there's, no, um, there's no space for another device in that market, because you know, the Fitbit, um, smart watches, and they can all track your motion. So it's really just you know, up to the application to do it. But that really brings up a good point. A lot of people have smart watches already. Okay, you can have a Moto, iWatch, or whatever. They collect, collect you know, they, they collect a really uh, large, huge amount of data. Like my Moto can uh, check my heart rate. It knows whether I'm moving because it has its own accelerometer. Okay, um, it doesn't have a temperature sensor, but you know that's inexpensive to add. Okay, if they want to add a temperature sensor, especially one that is just you know, contact based, it's not expensive to add. So they can collect a lot of data. The question is, how do you write an app to make use of that data? Is that making any sense? If they combine you know, what my watch collects, which includes my heart rate, and also the breathing sensor, they can have a much better or more complete picture of my potentially mental state. right? Because you know, now you, you're, it's not just based on breathing, it's also based on heart rate. Now, if you combine that one with my posture, that's even a more complete picture. Because when people are angry, they, their posture will change. Do you guys notice that when you're angry or when you're, you're pissed off, you know, your posture will change? You don't, you, don't, you don't stand like this anymore when you're angry, do you? What, what do you do when you're angry? You hunch. Because you're getting ready to spring into action. So all of that sensors you know, can be integrated in, into some kind of app. Any ideas, any great ideas, any you know, $20 million ideas from you guys? No. I also showed you guys this. Okay, you know, this one is not done yet, so it is still an open idea. It's the um, digital torque wrench. So this one is still, you know, an open idea. They, they still do not have uh, torque wrenches that are Bluetooth enabled. Okay, so all of these do have displays on those things. They don't have any apps, they don't have any cloud connectivity or anything like that. So how would you, you know, turn this into your five million dollar idea? And so that you can retire really soon. Well, five million dollars really won't last very really long, but it'll give you a starting point. But how, how, do you, how do you market something like this with the addition of an app that is cloud connected. In other words, okay, first thing, you have to of this display and also, also all of these user elements, user interaction elements, and put all of everything into a phone, okay? So this way, you know, when you're using a torque wrench, your phone can beep you or even spell out the amount of torque that you are exerting at that time. And it can tell you, okay, enough torque, it can give you a beep. Okay, so that's one thing you can do right away. But that's not the only thing you know, that this can do. Think about an automotive shop. Okay? How do you, what do you use a, a torque wrench for in an auto shop? Tires. Tires, very good. Okay, so with lock, with lugs, okay, for attaching the you know, wheels on back onto the car, they have to be torqued you know, correctly. But how do you know what torque to apply? What is the right amount of torque? Every car is slightly different. So how do you make this cloud connection? Sorry, put it in the app. Exactly. So your app can ask you, okay, what kind of car give me the make model? Or better yet, go to the VIN window, take a picture of the VIN. And then the app can send that picture directly back to the app, go back to the cloud, go to the server. They can do image processing. And using the VIN of your car, there's enough information there to know what, can, what is the make, model, year, and a whole bunch of other stuff you know, about your car. 
So uh, automatically, you know, your app can tell you, okay, since you're attaching the wheel using the log, using the lug nuts, it can tell you what torque is appropriate. So without, you know, actually doing anything else, so think about this process. You know, for a apprentice in an auto shop, they just have to walk up, take a picture of the bin, wait for the app to come back and say, yes, I know what kind of car it is, or you know, retake the picture. Now your torque wrench is already set up for the right amount of torque to be attached wheels onto the car. Instead of you know, having an apprentice to just torque it to no end. Over torque or not enough torque, right? Ne neither is good in the case of a car. Do you see that they're being valuable? Well, there you have it. I mean, we have about 10 people here competing you know, for that kind of product to be released you know, as soon as possible. <laughs> <clears throat> what do you need to make that happen? So let's say you want to go with that idea. Okay, I want to make a torque wrench that is Bluetooth enabled, that has an app that is cloud connected so that you know, people you know, can more correctly use the right amount of torque in the, in the case of a shop. So what, what, can, how, what do you need to do to make it happen? You can handle the app side, because you know, we talk about app programming in this, in this class, and if you take the next class, you really know everything that you need to get started with, with app writing. So, but what else do you need? The wrench itself, right? Okay, so what do you do with that wrench itself? You have to hook up to people who understand electronics. How do you attach a string cage to a wrench so that you can actually you, know, you can measure the torque? Is that okay? You also need to talk to people in the automotive industry because they have databases about you know, the right amount of torque for just about everything. So you need to talk to those people and see how you can access those databases. And then you need to talk to the end users, which are going to be the mechanics who will end up be using your, your torque and your app. And then you, have, you have to ask those people, what can we do to you know, improve the use of a Bluetooth-enabled torque wrench? So those are the things that you need to do if you want to pursue this idea. You, know, you have to go through all of those steps and get those people involved. What about the potential return of some idea like that? Okay, let's say I make a device like this, okay, and I just start to sell it as tax Bluetooth enabled cloud connected smart torque wrench. Do you think that's going to sell? Well, first of all, how am I going to retail that or sell that thing? I only have a few choices eBay. <laughs> right? I can sell it through my own account on eBay. I might sell maybe five a month. So what do you do when you have a device like that? When you have an idea like that and you have a device and you have the whole thing or you want somebody to help you fund the project, what do you do? Kickstart. You can do a kickstart, but kickstart does not reach um, mechanics very well. Because mechanics cannot afford to use something that is not reliable, that is not backed up by a good manufacturer. So what you need to do is to talk to these people. In other words, you are, your product, your idea, may not be marketed under your own brand, but it will become a snap-on you know, brand product. Because they have trucks you know, to go visit all the mechanics, you know, on a regular basis. And of course, you're, you're not gonna make as much money as selling it as your own brand, okay, in terms of how many dollars you make per device. But you can sell a lot more in terms of quantity. And you can offload with, uh, customer service to snap on as well. So you're only developing the product, but not doing all the manufacturing, you're not retailing, you're not supporting your product yourself, you're leaving it up to a larger organization that is already established in that particular market. Is that making any sense? Sort of? Can anyone guess you know, how often these snap-on trucks visit mechanics, you know, like automotive shops? 
what about from the perspective of a particular shop? How often do they get visited by map tools or snap on, you know, those trucks? Once a month. Once a month or maybe once every few weeks. Okay, and every single time, you know, those trucks appear, what do you think mechanics do? Especially um, owners of these shops. Yep, every single time. Is that making sense? Okay. <clears throat> what other ideas do you think you, you can have in terms of apps, but connected to other products? So you're not selling the software, you're not making money by how much people have to pay to buy your app, but you are doing it in a, through a completely different way. You're selling your app or selling your service as a consultant through you know, the development of something else. Okay, I'll let you guys think about it a little bit, like 30 seconds, and then I'll tell you something else that I did over the weekend. That I think, I go like, hmm, we can use an app for that. Okay. 30 seconds, that's got some time. <laughs> What about the app? I should play that. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, 30 seconds is up. Dishwashers. Dishwashers. That's kind of like this kind of appliance that you go to the basement of Sears to buy, right? I mean, you installed it, you, and you, it, it's not supposed to be you know, visible, or it's supposed to kind of blend away in the kitchen. So why do I want to connect a dishwasher to an app in a mobile device? And make it cloud connected too. <laughs> what do you do with a dishwasher? You wash dishes with a dishwasher, okay? And what do you want to know about your dishwasher? Sorry? We ran it or not. Whether you ran it or not, okay. So you can check your status, right? Okay. So knowing, you know, the current status of your dishwasher, like okay, it still has sixty five minutes to go, that may be useful. Okay, because you know, when you're planning a party or a big meal. You know, sometimes you don't know if the dishes have been ran or not. Okay, so you can keep a log. Yep, go ahead. Uh, and you also want to know if, if it's, uh, have all the ingredients are in and it's, it doesn't need any like uh, right. powder or anything. So you need uh, dishwashing fluid, right? Yeah, because sometimes you, you can be at the store and say, oh, yeah, I, I need to buy this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially these days in Sacramento, because we have somewhat in the hard water, what do you use in the dishwasher to, so that your, your, your wine glasses come out you know, sparkling clean? Do you guys even do your dishes? I mean, you know, from, from your expression, it seems like you know, there are only like two people in this class that would actually use the dishwasher. <laughs> well, Cascade is the actual, you know, the, the whole dishwasher you know, thing, but there's one kind of com uh, blue liquid that makes it jet dry, okay? The name is jet dry. How many times do you run your dishwasher and go like, uh oh, you know, we're running on, a, we're running low on jet dry. What happens when you run your dishwasher without using jet dry for a while? What happens to your wine glasses that were, that used to be like sparkling clean and totally transparent? What do, what do you think hard water would do to that? Spots, it becomes, thing, it becomes a, um, how do you call those, a glass that is kind of like frosted. Well, anyway, it won't be transparent anymore, it'll be cloudy, okay? So your app can tell you the current level of jet dry in the washer. If it's running low, it can give you an alert. Does it make sense? You can even automatically order from Amazon or some other you know, online merchant you know, it can automatically order jet dry for you, you know, anticipating that it will run out within five days. It can, it can totally do that because you know, your app can, once it's connected to your dishwasher, 
it will know on the average how often do you run the dishwasher, how much you know, jet dry it's gonna use per wash, so it can actually anticipate and say, okay, with the quantity left in the dishwasher, it will only last you five days. And it give you an alert and say, if you order now, you will still be in time to refill it before it runs out. Okay. What else do you think your dishwasher needs to let you know? Go to the review website and look at the one-star rating on dishwashers and look at the most um, frequent complaint about dishwashers. What do you think people... Hmm? It's leaking. It's leaking, exactly. So if you have a leak sensor, which is not difficult to implement in a dishwasher, and you have that thing, okay, what good is a, is a leak sensor when you're on vacation and you have no connectivity to your dishwasher? And the dishwasher says, uh-oh, I think there's water leaking. It's not gonna do any good. So what do you think is gonna be more helpful? If your dishwasher is cloud connected and it is connected to an app, so your, when your dishwasher is starting to leak, okay, it doesn't even have to leak out. When there's a sign that it's leaking, it can send you an alert and say that your dishwasher may be leaking, you might need to schedule an appointment to have someone to look into it. Is there value in this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what's gonna happen when your dishwasher does leak and you come back from a vacation and it has been leaking for two weeks already? What's gonna happen to your house? You gotta rot your floor out. Yep, if, what if this is on the, on the second floor? <laughs> It's gonna be expensive, right? It's gonna be expensive. So do you think people are willing to pay the extra money to buy a smart dishwasher that is cloud connected and it has an app attached to it? People who have had leaks would definitely buy it, okay? What else about the dishwasher do you think an app can be useful for? What does, what does the user panel look like on the regular dishwasher? I mean, come on, you guys just don't do your washing. Do you, you, you don't do your dishes, do you? What, what do you think the control panel of a dishwasher look like? Exciting? No, not really. Super duper high tech? It's just a button. It's a to be super duper high tech. Though. Like, if I, if it's like me, I don't want it to be super duper high tech. I just want it to like show, okay, this is the type of washing that's going on, and this is uh, how much time is remaining, like anything else is just a distraction. In a certain way, yes, okay, but if you look at all the quote unquote high-end dishwasher these days, where is the control panel? Where are the displays? Inside. It's inside on the top, okay? When your dishes are being done, you cannot see those things or control it. Okay, so how, how is an app going to come to rescue in this case? You bring all the interfaces to an app. If you want to check how much time is remaining, it will show you know, the amount of time that is remaining. If you want to know what is the current stage, can I still add more dishes to it? It can tell you right away. What if you have a child at home and you want to lock your dishwasher while it is working? You can lock it from your phone. Is that making any sense? So a dishwasher can be Wi-Fi connected, cloud-based, and with an attached app to run it. And this has, you know, that has extra value. <coughs> so what are you gonna do if you say, okay, I wanna go with this direction, you know, this is going to be profitable, you know, I think people would like this product. Are you going to start with your own line of dishwashers? <laughs> of course not, okay? It takes a lot of infrastructure to manufacture, service, install you know, dishwashers. So what do you do? Who is the quote unquote snap on when it comes to dishwashers? Maytag. Maytag is one. If you go down to Sears, okay, you know, and you look at all the brands, Sears has got Canmore, right? So Canmore, Frigidaire, and KitchenAid, they're basically the same thing. They're basically the same manufacturer in the back end. 
Uh, there's Bosch, there's LG, there's there are Samsung. So those are the companies that you can try to approach and say, okay, I have the expertise, I have the know-how to help you connect your dishwasher to the cloud and write an app to run your, your dishwashers and it will have these added advantages and that's how you may be able to be a consultant to these companies. So you make your money by consulting and not by selling your app. What, is the, this, what are the comparisons or advantages versus disadvantages of you actually selling your app through the Play Store and make your money that way as opposed to being a consultant and help these companies to enable their devices so they are basically app aware and be able to hook up to the cloud and do all the stuff that we just talked about. How, how, how would those two things compare? Writing your app, selling it for money, versus you know, being a consultant to enable another company to sell apps you know, and, or app-enabled app appliances. So looking at it from the perspective of money, and also looking from the perspective of you know, whether it'll be something that you want to do over a long period of time. What do you think? If you sell your own app, okay, you're actually charging money for your own app, what do you have to deal with to continue your income stream? You need constant updates, but remember, a lot of apps do not charge extra money when you update. You're only getting money from the first purchase. All your updates are only there to have your apps to stay competitive, because other people can write similar apps and outsell you. Okay, so if you want to make money by selling apps, there are only only certain types of apps that are that are like that, like Pokemon Go. You know, but they didn't really capitalize on the on the money. Angry Bird may be the, one of the very few apps that, were, that was able to make money by selling the app itself. What, what about... A lot of merchandise and stuff that came along afterwards, too. Yes, but, but that's because they, they run out of the income stream by selling the app already. So they have to use merchandise and stuff like that to continue that income stream. Angry Bird's not free. I think the first versions were was not free. So if you look up Angry Bird, huh? It's not free. I don't. I never played it. So if you look up Angry Birds, especially if you look it up on uh, Wikipedia, you can actually see how much money they make. The company that makes it is called Ro Rovio or Rovio. <coughs> and if you look up Angry Birds uh, Wikipedia, and you look up spin-off compilations history. Okay, I'll put it this way. Um, if you look at exports from that country, I think it's Sweden. Okay, so this is a, a Swede product. Um, what are the exports of Sweden? The most famous you know, exports or most uh, obvious exports Chocolate. of? Hmm? Chocolate. From Sweden? Uh, yeah. Doesn't Swedish seem chocolate. like they can grow coconut over there. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, so most people think Volvo. Okay, you know the oh, car yeah, manufacturer, Volvo. Okay, is a, is a big manufacturer. So they, they people tend to think that the you know, Volvo is the biggest export of Sweden, but that's not the case. What else do you think Sweden exports? Meatballs, Minecraft. <laughs> okay, meatballs. But you can make meatballs at home that are <laughs> Swedish style, right? There was a butter price in Sweden a while ago. The other one is ABBA. Okay, ABBA is actually, it, they outsold, in terms of revenue, they outsold Volvo for the years when uh, ABBA was popular. The, the, num the, the amount of money they make from selling records and cassette tapes and whatnot was more than the revenue that Volvo had in those years. Imagine that. And then there is, after you know, ABBA, there's Angry Bird. Okay, if you look at the revenue of Angry Bird on in those years when it's you know at its prime, they outsold you know uh, Volvo as well, cars. <laughs> this, the caramel dancing song is from Sweden. Hmm? It's from a Swedish band called Caramel. Caramel dancing. Hmm. Did you ever heard that? Nope, I did not. 
But this is, this is one of the very rare cases where you can actually make a lot of money from selling the apps. Okay? If you become a consultant and you help enable the manufacturers and other people to kind of, you're, you're offering your service, you're selling your service, okay? How would that compare to making money from selling the apps directly? Okay. Well, you have competitions, right? You do have other people, you know, who can write apps as well. But if you know, you know, what to, who to approach, and and if you have ideas of how to actually make the app work really well, okay, instead of just saying, oh, we can bring, you know, the the dishwasher panel onto a virtual panel on your phone that looks exactly the same as the panel on the dishwasher, that's not going to work. And it only going to, it's only going to work you know, with Bluetooth, which means you know, you can, you can only, this will only work when you're up within 30 feet of your dishwasher. That's not going to work. So what you need to do is to think about, okay, once we have the connectivity of your dishwasher to the internet, and then your phone has the app that also connects to the internet, then you have to think about all the other things that your app can do that a normal dishwasher cannot do. Okay, leak detection and notification is one. Automatically reordering supplies for the dishwasher is another one. What about that filter inside the dishwasher? Most dishwashers do not have a grinder anymore. Instead, they have a user or end user serviceable filter. What about that filter? You can have a reminder. Your app can have a reminder and say, okay, the last time this filter was removed and cleaned, was more than two weeks ago, this may be a good time to clean it. Because what happens when you do not clean that filter that is supposed to filter your know, food debris and whatnot? Your dishwasher is gonna stink. And what's wrong with ours? If it smells bad, it can be water that is not completely pumped out combined with food debris inside. And then there are products that can help you to clean it too. So your dishwasher can periodically remind you and say, okay, uh, this washer can use this product for cleaning. So if you take all of these ideas, okay, and have a little mock-up you know, run, and you take these ideas to one of the dishwasher you know, manufacturers, they may be interested. And how, and why do you think these manufacturers, let's say it's Whirlpool, okay, or, uh, I think KitchenAid is the is the company that makes all these uh, hardware. Why do you think they want to take your consulting service instead of saying, "Ah, we can do this in house, go away"? Do you they think they have done. in? They have never done it. They don't have the expertise in house. Then why? How come they don't develop the in expertise in house? Because it's a huge company, obviously, right? They can just say, "Oh, we can just hire people, you know, that are our own employee to do this." Because I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys why people hire consultants to do certain things instead of hiring people as employees to do the same thing. Why go for consultants instead of hiring their own employees to do it? Medical reasons, stuff huh? like that. Medical benefits, stuff like that. Maybe. Benefits, okay? Because as a consultant, you are just paid X amount of money and you are in charge of your own health care plan, your own retirement, and so on. But if they hire people as employees of KitchenAid, they have to they have to add that person to the payroll, which automatically means they have to pay your know, social security and a whole bunch of other stuff, medical, retirement, you know, and stuff like that. And on top of that, okay, if KitchenAid decides, okay, we don't want to do app stuff anymore. Okay? As a consultant, they just say, okay, there's there'll be no more projects. We don't need to uh, appify our ranges cooktops, <laughs> which you originally planned that you know, this would be my next project. They can just say, okay, no more you know, app development because it's on a contract basis, right? One contract is done, you're done. What about employees? If KitchenAid decides to hire somebody to do app development and they decided, oh, we don't want to go that route anymore, they will have to let go of the employee, right? And what are the risks involved in letting go of employees? Right. As opposed to just telling a consultant, we don't have any further projects for you. 
Okay, so there's a legal stuff involved here when you hire somebody. So I'm just telling you guys, you know, if you know how to write apps, sometimes you know you can make money not by selling your app, but by offering your app selling expertise as a consulting service to some other companies. So the key is to find out you know, what you can do with a certain thing to convince you know, the other party and say that, yep, we want to hire you as a, con as a consultant to enable our appliance or whatever to use apps. Yep. Would you have it all worked out before you approach them, or would you have it tentatively kind of like, I can do it, let's just approach them, and then if they say, yeah, I'll work it out? You don't want to give them freebies. <laughs> In other words, you know, you want to be able to just tell them the effect of the app. You know, remember, you know, early day, you know, in this class, you know, we talk about um, the value of an app as opposed to features of an app. Do you remember that? Yeah. So you want to give the manufacturer just the values, and you want to talk about the values from their perspective. In other words, you know, if you have this kind of technology in your dishwasher you can outcompete your competitors because you know these will offer these you know, distinct values to your customers. Now there are, from the manufacturer perspective, there are other things that these apps can also be used. You can collect data about you know, how well the appliances run you know, once it is installed. You can collect you know, statistics of you know, how often do people run their appliances. And all of those things are very, very useful. People would actually pay, these companies would pay people to collect their data. It's, okay, tell me how you use an appliance, how often do you run it, which cycle do you run the most? Okay, they want to collect data about you know, how effective is their you know, filtering technology. They want to collect all this data. And once you have an app running, or once you, once you have these dishwashers being smart and hooked up to the web, they can collect all that data already. And that's worth money already to these companies. So that's what you need to do is to research, you know, find out you know, how to convince you know, these companies as a consultant and say that I can make all of these things, really good things happen. You know, and of course you also need to prove that you can make it happen you know, with, a, with a resume and also you know, a, um, a collection of projects that you have already completed to show that you can actually do it. But once you have that, you know, I think, you know, there are chances, there are, there are lots and lots of opportunities. If you go down to the, uh, the basement of Sears, just look through their products and think about how many of those are not yet app enabled and can use the value offered by apps, making it smart. Just walk through the appliance you know, section, walk through you know, the tool section, and come up with your own your conclusion. I mean your belt, okay? You know, think about this thing, okay? Think about not this one, but this one, okay? <clears throat> think about this thing being integrated to a belt that actually looks good. Like a buckle, huh? A buckle, yeah, it, it, exactly. You know, integrate it into a buckle because that's exactly the way, it's needs, way, way yeah. it needs to go, right? If you make it look good, you know, actually have, you know, Duck Dynasty or something on it, okay? You know, somewhere at Walmart. <laughs> it can sell like hotcake. Quacks. <laughs> hmm? It quacks, yeah. It quacks when you're when you're pissed, right? <laughs> and then when you're really angry, it, it sounds like shotguns going off. <laughs> like that. Yeah, that would be kind of. I, I would bet you those features alone will sell it. To a certain, you know, audience. Even if just a buckle that did that would sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then when you look at the app interface, you know, when you're angry, like if you're really pissed, they'll show you like you know six, you know, shotgun shells. <laughs> <laughs> this is how angry you are. You know, six shotgun shells. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> But just think about that. But think about all the possibilities, you know, of yeah, you know, because these are all individual devices, you know, sitting out there. They're not integrated into anything, but if you make it integrate into a buckle, you know, it's that's an idea right there. Okay?
Well, we are out of time today. You know, I hope you guys do not think that I'm just wasting your time because we have done we have done all the things that we need to do in this class. But I do want to give you an idea of where you can go with your skills of writing apps. Okay, we're good. I need an app to tell me it's time to.